whether we believe it or yes, we all have had the experiences at one point or the other. There are some times in our life we felt like we would have, we should have done things better. There are times in our life we would have felt like, oh, I didn't plan it well. There are times in our life we wished we planned before we started. And all of those events, they are all part of the projects we have taken the faith in our lives. One of the uh, most important projects of life that I always find people um, coming over and over again to feel like, oh, if I had known, I wouldn't have done this. It's especially things that we do on social basis, things like your, your wedding, your birthday. Uh, some of us felt like the money was spent on our wedding, we shouldn't have spent it. Some of us sometimes we feel like the money was spent in the last birthday or that birthday before. Or one of those that they wouldn't have spent those because you are trying now to do the cost benefit analysis and you find that, that those things were already planned. We place priority on things that are not supposed to be of prior importance, as it were. So every part of our life have at some point experienced projectized approach or non-projectized approach. The projectized approaches, which are proactive approaches that we've ever used have given us some kind of a sense of achievement. Why the non-projectized approaches have made us feel some sense of regret and felt bad, all right? But whichever case, life is 100% project. If you really want to experience a successful life, uh, I would like us to know and have that as a foundation that life is 100% project. Why businesses run projects is because human beings are products of projects. All right, our tastes, our choices, our our passion, they are all products of choices. Choices sprouted through creativity, through innovation, through problem solving. So we are all um, out to embrace new things embrace not just new things but embrace better side of life and to me the most effective way of creating a better side of life is projectizing every task that comes our way be it simple be it complex it doesn't really matter all right for any time you take time and say you're planning you're actually having projectized approach to doing something for every time you say you want to manage your time, you actually say you want to projectize what you're doing. For any time you say, I want to know exactly how to make use of this money available or this resources available, you are actually projectizing your approach to handling certain things. If you really needed to consider how much you have before you take out time to eat, that means you're projectizing your feeding. If you really needed time to, to, to plan out how much money you're going to spend on laundry, how much money you're going to spend on, um, on um, um, maybe clothing, how much money you're going to spend on feeding, on development and all of that. You're actually projectizing, all right? So projectized approaches to life are the most strategic approaches to get to the better side of life. Now, there is one, um, one, of these myths that people have whenever we talk about project management. Whenever we talk about project management, people think like a project management should only be applicable to organizations. It shouldn't be applicable to individual lives. But the truth is project management should first be applicable to our individual lives. Then we will not be able to transfer it to the organizations. We have so much more to say about people who are very good, high performance, um, employees, very good in their workplace, but when you come to their personal life, they are nothing to write home about because they apply project principles, they apply project processes, project approaches, project methodologies and systems in their workplace. But when they come to their personal life, they highly neglect those principles, those processes and those applications that made the organizations better off. So if we must have a better side of life, we must first of all on our own, um, understand and apply project management to our own personal life so that we can be able to push it to um, 
our organizations. Let me give you an example. Let's take, for instance, every organization has what we call performance. Of course, performance is the number one keyword for organizations. Every organization is looking for profit. Every organization is looking for productivity. Every organization is looking for maximizing um, resources, as it were. So when we enter organizations, organizations have systems, organizations have processes, organizations have methodologies that help them achieve the performance that we want to achieve through the individuals, all right? But in our own personal life, most of us don't talk about performance. We don't set goals, we don't set objectives, we don't set plans. So that makes it feel like we are carefree about our own lives, but we are careful about our organizational life. So mediocrity is, is, is a function of not applying project management approaches to our own personal life, all right? So, Lack of excellence, lack of quality is just not being able to understand project management principles and then be able to apply it to our life. Anybody anywhere who understands the principle of project management and applies it to himself or herself first will ever live to be successful. Okay? Will ever live to be successful. So that being said, we just need to understand that project management is like the bloodline to every successful life. Okay, project management is like the bloodline to every successful life. Successful life as an individual, successful life as an organization, successful life as a nation, successful life as a community, and all of that. All right. As far as human beings exist, then project management will always exist. As far as our tastes keep rising, our choices keep rising, our passion keep rising. Obviously, project management will keep existing and project management will keep evolving. Like we, we will continuously come up with new principles uh, to ensure that we have the needs, the tests, the passion of the people being met. All right. Uh, project management will keep evolving just to ensure that development is being carried out. Development is on the rise. All right. Project management will be on the increase as far as organizations are looking for profit, they are looking for high productivity, they are looking for performance, they are looking for meeting customer expectations. As far as those things exist, then project management will always be there. Now, I want to make a very simple advice. If you're coming to this course because you wanted to get a certificate, please, I would like you to make that secondary and then make primary the goal to understand in true terms what project management is all about, and then how you can use it. Now, in project management, project management remains quite creative, or project management exists in the creative and innovative domain of human existence, or perhaps organizational existence. All right? Now, now, now what does that mean? That means project management drives us to problem solving, Project management drives us to problem identification. Project management drives us to planning. Project management drives us to execution of actions in the project plan or in the plan that we initially did. Now, project management drives us to monitoring the progress of whatever thing was planned and implemented. Project management helps us to know when a goal is achieved and when it's not achieved. Now, if you follow these simple things I've just said now, you will agree with me in perfect terms. Now, project management is just all about making our lives successful, right? It's all about making our lives, making our organizations successful. All right. Now, from the case study we just went through about um, um, IN and his company, Apollo, and Radisson Telecommunications, from the case study, yes, all this happened because IN had not handled the project well, right from the beginning, where the requirements and scope of the project should be collected from the client in detail and with great clarity. Now, from the pointing out with the, uh, someone pointed out that the scope, the scope of the project was not adequately defined. Someone pointed out the clarity issues that were not well defined. Another person pointed out communication issues. All right, so I have failed to collect the detailed scope of the work. He also did not discuss all the aspects of the project, such as change of scope, and later additions and enhancements to the software we tried. So 
there were no better negotiations to the contract. So they, apart from the loss incurred by delay, there was also cost incurred because there was no better negotiation to the project. So there were additions to the project which they never negotiated, right? If Iron had clearly discussed and negotiated the terms of the project with clients and negotiated a complete scope of work, Apollo would not have needed to pay any penalty and would not have incurred any loss in this project. Hence, you can understand that project management is a crucial aspect of completing any project successfully, and it is the project manager's responsibility to lead a project from start to a successful completion. All right, so having gone through this, now let's look at all we're going to look at into this class. Now, there's something I would like us to understand here. Projects do not fail at the end of the project execution. Projects fail at the beginning of the project. So your planning, your initiation, determines whether the project will fail or not. Just a little digression. Recently, I observed, although it has been there, but it just came to my mind again. It, it gets me angry anytime I think about this. Now, there is something I found about human beings generally all around the world, not just in Nigeria, not just in Africa. Now, if you search through the internet, just search how to become rich, the fact that there are a whole lot of series there, a whole lot of series. And in the thoughts of the people, of most people I've interacted with, what I get during discussion most often is people talking about how to make money, how to increase their money, how to get rich, how to get more assets and all of that. But little, maybe one in 100, whenever you have a meaningful discussion with some people, one in 100 will tell you how to create value, how to add value, how to capture value, how to deliver value. It's just like one in 100. Now that could clearly tell why most people can never be rich. Because we are reversing the order of success. And the reverse of the order of success is you trying to get money when there is no value to be added. Money is a product of value added, value created, value delivered, and value captured. That's how money is generated. And then I, I am privileged to, to be a mentor, entrepreneurship mentor. And I've mentored a whole lot of people, not just in Nigeria, all around the world. And many people come to you when startup entrepreneurs come to you. Their business plan is more of financial planning. They will tell you how much they will make in year one, make in year two, make in year three. But little attention is paid to the process, to the system, to the procedure that will give value to the customer. Now, most business plans, I tell you the truth and I lie not, most business plans do not have customer relationship strategy, do not have customer service strategy as part of the plans. So as it were, um, value capturing is paramount, but value delivery, value development is not, or value creation is not really part of the whole thing they want to talk about. And that is a reverse order. So to prosperity or to success as it were. Now, project management gives us a clear avenue to structuring how to get well with our plans of life. And if you are to be a projectized entrepreneur, now this is how your plan is going to look like. So first of all, you identify a problem and the second one is that you find out how to solve the problem, right? So you have a plan on how to solve the problem. Then possibly you go build a team of people, communicate your vision to a team of people who will help you to achieve the goal, the ultimate goal, right? And then you implement with your team the action plans that have been developed on solving the problem. Now you will notice that there is no revenue until value is added. The consistency in innovating on the value and delivering the value is what determines 
the revenue and the sources that come to us as individuals and as an organization. Any attempt to reverse this order is criminality. Any attempt to reverse this order is Yahoo Yahoo. Any attempt to reverse this order will bring legal actions upon the person who is taking this kind of effort. So we must come back to aligning our mentality in the right order. Now, there is another misconception that I've seen. Um, you know, if you are ever into business planning or business development, you find out that not all businesses have the same characteristics, especially when it comes to time, when it comes to resource management or resource involvement, when it comes to human um, capital uh, involvement and all of that. You find that the characteristics of businesses are not the same. Now, where am I going to? In most business plans, of course, we know that business planning and business development is a whole project on this one. So that's why I'm taking it as a case study to explain and buttress more on this because some of us, after this class, we go starting up our own uh, uh, project firms or all starting up our own firm. So we need to get it right from the beginning. All right, so in this uh, project planning, as it were, if you look at it as a case, project planning, project development, or business plan and business development, you will find out that most people, when they are talking about business planning, they are just talking about delivering what others have in an already existing clouded, heavily test market, and they want to make money out of such. You will find out that innovation, creativity, problem solving in most business plans are absent, completely absent. But they tell you how many millions they are going to make by running someone else's idea without modification and then trying to launch into an already existing market without carrying out due diligence as to what could be the pitfalls, what could be like no SWOT analysis, no personal analysis, no, in fact, no environmental analysis. They believe there is a market for this and they are launching into it. Now, this is some of the things that businesses face. So maybe businesses come out in three years, they have gone into extinction and we begin to wonder that business was doing well. So what happened? One of the things that happened is that the business was from the beginning never projectized. Okay, from the beginning it was never projectized. All right, so we need to go back, work on a mindset, set this, the right mindset, and then get to work. As part of the characteristics I was talking about, if you're going to go into cassava processing for a case study, you will agree with me <laughs> that your break-even point as a cassava processing plant and the break-even point of the person producing chinchin can never be the same. Your break-even point as a crude oil refining firm and your break-even point as, a, as an automobile firm can never be the same. Your break-even point as a training consulting firm and your break-even point as a banking firm can never be the same. But what do we really get in all of this? We don't really carry out research, like inept research on the things we want to do. So what we do is most often, someone will go and pick a business template that does not relate to his industry and tries to form that into what could be part of his industry and then want to force that template on his business. And all of a sudden, the expected break-even point will not occur. The expected uh, revenue will not come. Then you'll start seeing staff uh, murmuring, bogging, and all of that. And then you start seeing that business begins to fall apart. But after going through this course, you will learn due diligence in business development, in business processes, in business operations, in schedule management, in financial management, and every other part of management, so that we all could become 360 degree leaders as regards to quality, as regards to performance, and as regards to excellence, all right? 
Okay. Now, I want to be sure that what I'm saying is making sense. If what I'm saying is making sense to you at any point, please help me type two two in the chat room. If what I'm saying is making sense to you, please type two two in the chat room so that we can, we know that we're on the same page. You only have two people saying to two. Oh, maybe other the things I'm saying does not make sense to everyone. Okay, so let's proceed now quickly. What are we going to look at today? We'll look at defining using simple terms or define using simple terms what a project is, a project life cycle, and a project management in general. Provide a practical approach to what many consider a complex process, which is the management of projects. Then we'll also uh, look at simplifying. Uh, the project management process required to manage a project successfully from start to finish. And uh, that's more of what we're going to be looking at in this first lecture. So we're going to go through the introduction, project management context, and project management processes today. Now, quickly, in the introduction, we look at what is a project, we look at the related, uh, we look at what is project management, and we look at the related end of us of project. Now, Please understand me. Everything we are going to deal with here are going to be much more on a practical dimension rather than on the theoretical dimension. So if there's anything you don't understand, that's to say you cannot apply, please just call attention to it. Um, in IIPM, we focus more on helping you to understand so that you can apply. That is our priority. And no matter what we teach, if you don't understand, we have failed. That would be a failed project. So we don't want to fail. So we take our time and explain things, all right? Now, uh, I will take project management definition in very simple terms. Uh, project management, or perhaps a project, let's take project first. A project, um, any task carried out to achieve a specified result or group of tasks carried out to achieve specified results under clearly specified time, scope, and budget, or resources, we will say that is a project. So anything you're doing that will require time, that will require resources, that will require um, planning, we regard that as a project. So for instance, this training is a project because it's going to require time, it's going to require resources. Of course, someone could say, but the training is free if I don't want to pay, yes. But it still requires resources from you because you're going to subscribe, make your data subscription, <laughs> which is a resource, okay? If you're going to use your office, that's a resource. If you're going to be running generator to make sure that you attend all of this training, that's a resource. Even if you're not running generator, but you're paying power bills, that's also a resource, okay? Then we now consider uh, planning. Of course, they, they, this, this training has a schedule, 8 to 10 o'clock, first lecture, uh, 12 to 2 o'clock, second lecture, all right? So that's the schedule of the training, and that means it has a plan, all right? So anything we do that will involve time, that will involve scope, and, or perhaps involve planning, and that will involve resources, obviously, we're ready into projects. Now, according to Project Management Book of Knowledge, it defines project as a unique temporary endeavor undertaken to produce unique set of deliverables under clearly specified time, scope, and budget, or scope and resources. A unique temporary endeavor undertaken to produce unique set of deliverables under clearly specified time, scope, and resources, or budget. Now, if you look at that definition very well, that definition is the definition of any organization that wants to succeed. It's the definition of any individual that wants to succeed. Now, pick the definition from each of the words taken there. Number one, it is a unique, temporary endeavor. That means project, are characterized by creativity. They are characterized by innovations. Creativity and innovations. Creativity and innovations. 
creativity, and innovations. So the power line of a project manager lies on his ability to be creative and to be innovative. If you want to be a 360 degree high performance project manager, your, your, your foundation lies on your creative and your innovative abilities. It drives every other thing. So that's number one aspect of what project is. Now, do you know that, that that uniqueness of the project is what will raise the test, the interest, the desires of the stakeholders who are involved in the project. For instance, the creativity is what will determine whether sponsors will come in. The creativity is what will determine whether uh, customers will buy, clients will come in. Now, 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 importantly, the sustainability of the project also is dependent on the creative and innovative foundation of the project, which is not going to be a standout, but inherent to the project manager and his project team. So their competencies, their skills, their abilities, their strengths will have to come to play first in the domain of being unique. All right, so if you say you're a unique project manager or high performance project manager, the best place or the best way to say that is to show the uniqueness in the project product or in the project deliverable. If we cannot see it in the project deliverable, then we cannot believe that you are a high performance or unique uh, project manager. So that's one. Then secondly, the definition tells us that project man uh, projects are temporary. That's to say projects are not things that we do forever. Projects have start and finish times. Projects are not businesses, but projects are contained in businesses. Projects are not businesses, but projects are contained in businesses. Why am I trying to explain so? Now, if you look at uh, business, if you look at business, business has a start time. Business doesn't have a close time, but projects have start time and close time. Why? Because there are target goals for each project and each project has a life cycle. That's to say, if we do not meet up with the terms and conditions of this project within the specified time, the need for the project, the goal for the project, the objectives of the project might become no longer relevant. Let's take, for instance, if someone wakes up right now and say he wants to, uh, he wants to invent a mobile phone. They ask him, what is he doing? Say he wants to invent a mobile phone. You'll be wondering whether he actually wants to invent a mobile phone or he should go to do market competition or market uh, competitive analysis to know how his product will come in. Because at that point, the life cycle of well, phone invention at this moment, I would say it has, uh, it has passed. It has passed. But the life cycle of the business of telecommunication can never pass. It will keep evolving. It will keep, nobody can come up with a phone now who say he's the inventor of, of phones. No, no one. Okay. So having to identify that projects have that temporary domain, it means therefore that project managers and their teams, inclusive of their stakeholders, should learn to be disciplined when executing projects. Learn to be disciplined when executing projects. Learn to be disciplined Man is a good project. And I'm going to take a case study. Now, in Nigeria, for a case, we've been talking about uh, digitalizing the voting system in Nigeria. <laughs> I had a task man that came to my office the other day and was coming to educate me on task matters. And when he was explaining the system of task collection, I was so amazed. I like so. Nigeria is this brilliant that we have such systems that no one can ever steal from Nigeria. But yet we cannot build systems that can digitalize our voting system. And I came to the conclusion that 
the stakeholders involved in that sector are self-centered, they are selfish, they are non-determined, they will not be committed to digitalizing the process. Because why? The process we seems to work against their own individual interests. Now, I asked the question. I said, if Nigeria, it was easy for us to come up with systems like BVN, you know, BVN, right? You we came up with systems like uh, driver's license, all those things are digitalized. So why is the voting process a strong thing to deal with? It would take us a twinkle of an eye to get those things done. Because somehow we already have systems to do so. We have BVN that can help you do so. You have your voter's card, which is digitalized, that can help you do so. You have your name card that can help you do so. And all of those things. So why is it not being, why is the electoral system not being digitalized? Or why is it not fully digitalized? Why are we not allowed to vote using electoral systems or digital electoral system? The answer is simple. The stakeholders are not committed. So in the same vein, we have project managers and organizations like private organizations, we have a whole bunch of project managers and public parastatals who maybe due to the non, the democratic, non-democratic systems of government around uh, this nation, Nigeria and some other parts of the world, they don't want to uh, digitalize some of these processes. Now, where am I going to? If Nigeria enters into war, which we are not going to, but I'm just saying that we enter into war, and then during the war, when I say, okay, we are going to, uh, we are going to, we now bring out digital systems of voting, that will become an outdated request. Because the stakeholders at that moment might not be interested. You have trampled on their request for so long that they now entered into violence and you now brought out a system that will make it work. As it were, uh, this class is not supposed to discuss national matters, but since the nation is also into projects, there is nothing wrong in discussing it, right? Now, there are so many issues around the nation that, and, and I'm not talking about Nigeria only, all around the globe, of us. Two days ago, we, the war in Israel started. So Israel is at war with countries, uh, the Gaza war and all of that. So all of these things can be handled by well-defined projects. Okay, well-defined projects. Before any conflict will arise, there have been some unmet needs. And those unmet needs, if they are priority to those whose needs are not met, they will throw into conflicts. And if those conflicts are not managed well, they'll become crises. And if those crises are not managed well, they will grow into battles and wars. So projects are temporary. For anyone here who could be a government worker, please let's extend our voice to all of those directors. They should learn how to talk. Because a time will come, if we do not follow the proactive processes, a time will come when we say we have now digitalized the voting system, we say we don't need it again. A time will come when we say we are regionalizing Nigeria, we say we don't need it again. A time will come when we say we are restructuring Nigeria, we say we will restructure it ourselves. Because why? The, 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 the temporalness of the project has come and has gone. We saw what happened the other time in the name of NSACs, that was just the warning sign, all right? And when nations neglect their democratic responsibilities, they will end up bringing upon themselves discomforts of conflicts, of crisis, and all of that, all right? So temporarily, projects remain in that category. You know, those ideas you have it, you can have beautiful ideas, but if they remain in your mind, and nothing is done. A time will come when those ideas will become outdated and no value will come from it. So the best thing in idea management is to know that ideas are temporary and ideas are just project uh, in pieces that need to come together to form value, all right? Then another part of this definition is that the temporariness of these projects uh, 
they are uh, these activities they are carried out to also produce unique deliverables unique deliverables unique deliverables so unique results unique performance all right so if we all can pay attention to this definition of project management right now in simple terms we will we will gradually enhance our success rates so first of all understand that projects are unique so from this day decide to venture into doing things that are unique that means you are taking a decision to improve on your creativity and your innovative abilities then secondly know that projects are temporary that means you have to take up discipline to make sure that as ideas come to you you sit down think on them plan on them discuss it with the right people and then produce executable plans and then execute that not that projects are out to produce unique set of deliverables so that means before you ever say anything you're producing is unique you are, you need to find out from the people who are going to be benefiting from it whether the project will be termed unique in their own perspective or not you are not the one that will actually say the project is unique as it were it is the environment where the project will be introduced that will say the project is unique or not like instance you're not the one that will say you're excellent it is your customers that will tell you that you're excellent it is your um your stakeholders that will tell you you're doing an excellent work all right so if we take up this attitudes towards managing a life managing organizations then we'll get better right okay then the next thing i will like to look at there is what is project management project management is the application of skills tools and techniques for the successful execution of a project project management is the systematic application of skills tools and techniques for the successful execution of a project a project manager is a bundle of skills strategic skills tactical skills operational skills any skill you want to talk about a project manager is a bundle of skills <laughs> a project manager is that one person in an organization that is not expected to know little of everything or expected to know little of anything but he's expected to know almost everything in the organization that's a project manager so a project manager knows about operations a project manager knows about training a project manager knows about marketing a project manager knows about customer service customer relations a customer a project manager knows virtually everything about organization why because he is at the root of driving organizational performance so a project manager is a bundle of skills a project manager cannot say this is not my field or this is not my department it can never be head off by a project manager and that's why you call project managers 360 degree leaders it's only a project manager that you can call a 360 degree leader there is no other manager or management professional that has that right to answer a 360 degree leader not even a hr professional not even a hr manager they cannot because they are only taking a portion of the whole of a project a financial manager is taking only an aliquot of a project a human resource manager is only taking an aliquot a communication manager a, a customer relations manager but a project manager is like an ego watching over everything so he's the brain behind everything so he is a bundle of skills so that's why you find project managers today they are learning about maybe data analysis tomorrow you find them learning about customer relations next more you find them learning about stakeholder management another time you learn that you find them learning about monitoring and evaluation another time you let you find them learning about documentation another time you find them learning about safety you'll be wondering why they're learning everything it's because they are the everything in anything project managers are the everything in anything project managers are the everything in anything okay so as a project manager you just have to open your mind and learn learn and keep learning learn 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 and keep learning that's all
All right. All right. Then another thing that we must learn about project management is the systematic application of skills, tools, and techniques. Project management is made up of tools and techniques. Different systems, different principles, different methodologies to be applied. Understanding each of these systems, each of these methodologies, and how, when, and where to use them will make you much more effective and efficient as a project manager. So we need to understand project management tools, project management processes, project management uh, systems, methodologies, principles, applications, for us to become effective project managers. And the last combination there is that project management also applies management processes, management processes, right? So what are the management processes? Anything you can think about in project, a management is found in project or can be used in project. Everything you can find in management, all the core aspects of, of management, human resource management, uh, operations management, time management, uh, resource management, quality management, risk management, anything you want to talk about management, they are all surrounding the project environment. All right? So in simple terms, project management is application of skills, tools and techniques and management processes to ensure that a project is carried out successfully. Now, now a simple uh, a graphical illustration or tabular illustration, what it simply means is that first, as an individual, before you go carrying out a project, you have to first of all, identify all the skills needed for the project. Tactical skills, strategic skills, operational skills, functional, all of the skills, list them down, all right? Make sure they are listed down. Then you come to the uh, tools and techniques, all of the process or perhaps all of the tools, all of the techniques, principles, methodologies that need to be used in the project. So you have to find out the, 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 the tool or the pro or the, the methodology and principle and which, which activity it will be used to or used on, right? And then you come to the management processes, all of the management processes that will be involved. You look at it. So personally, you evaluate yourself. What skills do I have for this project? What tools and techniques do I know about? And what management processes am I acquainted with that I can use? For the successful execution of this project that will help as an organization you do the same thing in project management we call this kind of analysis we call it organizational process assets organizational process assets you taking the time to find out the skills in your organization find out the tools and techniques in your organization that will be relevant or perhaps applicable to the project you want to execute and then the management processes all of these joined together will form the foundation of your corporate strength. The foundation of your corporate strength. And that will help. All right, that will, that will seriously help. All right? Okay, now the next one there talks about the related end of us of project management. I will take questions after this. And then I will flip through the slides and then we we'll go on break and then return by 12 noon for Nigerians and 11 a.m. for Ghanaians. And if you're not in Nigeria, not in Ghana, they will be returning by 12.00 GMT plus one. Related end of us. I always say that there are indirect and direct related end of us to project management. The direct end of us regards to those who are directly to the project, and then the indirect are those who are playing support program or support activities to the project. And the direct end of us will have what we call programs, we we'll have what we call portfolios. And then in the indirect, we we'll have what we call the strategic management, and we we'll have what we call the operations management. And I'm going to explain all of this in a moment. Now, in the direct dimension, when you talk about program management, program management talks about uh, a collection of projects that are completely interrelated and interdependent on one another. 
for the purpose of achieving common goals or for the purpose of achieving uh, project goals. That's a program. So when you have one, two, three, or more projects, they are interrelated and uh, interdependent on one another so that a particular strategic objective will be achieved. We call that kind of a project a program. And I will give you an example. If we are to build uh, a market, for instance, you find that, that or let me use a basic one. Let me use a very basic one because we even call it program. Let's say you, you want to do a wedding. We always have what we call program, right? Okay. So we are on the program, we have cutting of cake, introduction of the bride and the groom, uh, and other things associated there. None of those content of the program will be independent of each other. All of them are interdependent. 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 Now, let's assume you want to build a market, construct a market. And in the market, you want to build stores, you want to build powerhouse, you want to build water system, waste system, and every other system you want to build. No one can build a powerhouse and say the market that has been completed without the other components of the market. No one can build stores only and say the market has been completed without building the other companies. So for the market construction to be completed, every other part of the project must be completed. So in that case, the power system of the market is dependent on or interdependent on the stores dependent on the others. All right. So that's example of a program. So programs are projects that work hand in hand to achieve a goal. Now, what of portfolios? Portfolios are a collection of programs and independent projects. The same assignment they want to do is to achieve project goals. So what does that mean? A portfolio is bigger than a program. That's to say a program is bigger than a single unit project. And uh, a portfolio is bigger than a single unit program. Why program is bigger than a project? a portfolio is bigger than a program. And then when you go further to breaking down the project, we now have what we call the sub projects or the project phases. And then we now have what we call the project tasks. Please, I will need you to do something for me. If you have your writing pen or your writing materials, please, I will need you to write this down because this is not contained in your material. So I will need you to write this down. I need to write this down. Um, Project um, related end of us of project. I need to write it down. I need to write it very fast. Please, if you're ready to write, can you type one one in the chat room? If you're ready to write, can you type one one in the chat room? If you're ready to write, can you type one one in the chat room? It's just a simple thing I want you to write. Okay, thank you. Now this is what I want you to write. This is like the breakdown of a project. How the project family, how it goes. So if you like, you can title it Project Family, how the Project Family goes. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we have there is a portfolio. So you can write portfolio, and then you draw an arrow down, draw an arrow down, okay, and then write program. And then draw an arrow down, and then write uh, projects. And then draw an arrow down, and then write phases or sub-projects. And then draw an arrow down, and then write tasks, task, tasks, tasks tasks. So the first word, portfolio, draw an arrow down. The arrow has to point down. That's to show that uh, portfolios give birth to programs. All right. And um, programs give birth to projects. And um, projects give birth to sub projects or project phases or project milestones. And then that gives birth to what we call tasks, tasks or project activities, all right? Tasks or project activities. If you've done that, that please type two two in the chat room. If you've done that, please type two two in the chat room. Okay. To ensure that everyone has done that, please can you type exactly what I just said now in the chat room? Can you type it in order? 
just type it in order so that those that could have lost will get it. Um, if you if you got it, please type it. 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 All right, while we await the typing, I will run to this again, and then um, I will just flip through the slides, and then we'll go have a break. Now, the first I would like to run through again is what a project is. A project is, uh, OK, thank you so much, Adebin Pink. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, every other person. Thank you. Please, um, Henry Nuzuka, it is sub, sub, S-U-B, sub project or project phases, not soft project, sub, S-U-B, sub. All right, thank you. So projects are unique temporary endeavors undertaken to produce a unique set of deliverables under clearly defined terms. And conditions and these terms and conditions border around the project constraints, which we term as time, scope, and budget. Now, I will want us to define project with a diagram. I want us to define project with a diagram. I will want us to define project with a diagram. So, please, since you're writing my cry, still with you, please, can you help me draw an equilateral triangle right on that paper? Can you help me draw a triangle that has all the sides equal? Can you let me draw a triangle that all the sides are equal? Okay, on one side, please note, not on one angle. On one side of the triangle, please write time. On the other side, please write scope. And the other side, write resources or budget. Scope, time, and budget. On one side, write scope. On one side, write time. And on the other side, write resources or budget. Now, at the middle, write quality. Inside the triangle, write quality. If somebody got that, please, can you have me type it in the chat room? The things that need to be labeled in the triangle or by the triangle. Please, if you got that, can you have me type that? I say scope, time, budget. Then inside, you write quality. If someone got that, please have me put that. Now, that triangle is a simple definition of a project and it is a simple project management model anyone can use. Thank you so much, Mr. Henry. It's a simple project ma management model anybody can use. We call it a triple constraint. Some other books can call it the project management iron triangle, iron triangle. Some call it project triangle, some call it project constraint, some call it um, different things. But whatever thing they call it, they all are serving the same thing. That's a simple definition of project management and it's a very simple model of carrying out projects. Okay, it's a very simple model of carrying out projects. That's to say every project must have a scope. And what is scope? Scope includes all the activities to be involved in a project. Uh, that's secondary anyway. But primarily scope contains your vision, your project statements, your vision statement, your goals and objective for carrying out your, the project before uh, you have your project descriptions before it comes to um, now giving us the project phases, now the project activities as the case may be. All right? All right. So if you can understand that triangle, you can simply do any project. When you're given a project, scope it, schedule it, resource it, and then make sure that the quality that is defined is in tandem with the scope, with the quality, and with the resources available. Uh, Mr. Damilola shared an experience this morning that um, he, the, their company had uh, a contract with Shell. And at the end of the day, uh, Shell expected them to fund a project of 100 million and then they will pay. Well, if you look at that particular project, we found out that the basic constraint there is now resources. Okay? The basic constraint there is the project resources. All right? So that means they have to develop a strategy to manage that. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Patrick shared his own experience too, of which the basic constraint to that project was lying around schedule time. Okay, was lying around schedule. Okay, 
Daniel Onyabo, the name of the triangle is Project Triangle or Project Constraint Triangle or Project Iron Triangle. Whichever one you can get, but definitely the most common name is Project Triangle. But the Project Triangle is bounded by Project Constraints. Okay. All right. So with this triangle, it's easy to know how to enter a project. You can make quick decisions, quick um, negotiations with this constraint or with this triangle. All right. Very simple. Just make sure that the scope, the time, and the project resource is equal or is in parallel to the expected quality. That means quality definition or quality expectations must be well defined and well communicated. Agreements must be reached by both the project team and the project uh, stakeholders so that we don't have the issue that Ian faced in his own project. All right. All right. Then the next thing we talked about there is project management, which in definition we say is the application of skills, tools, and techniques and management processes for the successful execution of a project. So if there is still space on your paper or your writing material, please, I will still want you to draw another triangle. I will still want you to draw another triangle, right? In this case, now you're going to target project management triangle, project management triangle, project. The first one is project triangle or the project constraint triangle or the project ion triangle, ion project triangle, whatever. Now, the second one is the project management triangle, right? Possibly you will not see this in any text. <laughs> Okay, but that's that's my best way of trying to explain what project management is all about. So on one side of the new triangle you've written or you've drawn, please write uh, skills. On the other side, write tools and techniques. On the other side, write um, management processes. So there are three sides, tools and um, um, you write skills, tools and techniques and management processes. Then at the middle, you write project 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 so that means for every project to be completed is it successfully there must be qualitative skills abilities competencies knowledge in place there must be tools and techniques in place and there must be management processes in place all integrated to make sure that there is a, a successful project execution all right okay and then when we talk about the related end of us I gave the family of a project management. I said there could be two sides, the, the, the direct sides and the indirect sides. The direct sides are the program management and the portfolio management. And I've explained those two. And I said the indirect side are the operations management and strategic management. The operations management has to do with the management of the project's product. So at the end of every project, business begins. All right, the business of project deliverables is what we call operations management. The day to day running or the day to day activities carried out to ensure that the project deliverable achieves its own objectives is referred to, referred to as uh, operations management. Why strategic management is actually at the foundation of projects. So, from, from scope to time to share uh, resources. Strategic management is involved. And what is strategic? Or what do we mean by being strategic? Strategic simply means being able to see the future and then bringing the future to the now. That's being strategic. So your innovative abilities, your creative abilities, your visionary abilities, communication abilities, all of those could be regarded as being strategic. Your decision-making abilities, all of those could be regarded as being strategic, all right? Okay, now before I flip through this because my time is gradually running up, let me know if there is any question, contribution, comment, then we proceed. Please, any question, any comment, any contribution, you can raise your hand. I will take that in five minutes and then we run through and uh, we continue. All right, I'm seeing a hand up. I, please, uh, Mr. Philip, kindly unmute and let's hear from you. Your hand is up. If you have a question, kindly unmute and let's hear from you. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, sir. You're welcome. My name is Philip Akibime. You're welcome, sir. Uh, there's a question or suggestion. 
I want to okay. trip in okay. to our class, everyone, one of us. Okay. Uh, firstly, I would thank you, the moderator. Then another point I want to bring out here is I don't know if you can reduce the speed limit so that everybody can be, at least some people are jotting. The way you started, no, at least I like the breakdown, but if you can bring it down so that everybody will catch up, at least it will be a good uh, um, help to everybody. Okay. That's my opinion. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I, I never knew I was running fast. I'm so sorry. But I will do just that. Okay, Mr. Henry, please kindly unmute Alicia from you, sir. I'm good. Are you getting me? Yes, please. We are with you. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, um this project and uh, this strategic uh, management, I, I couldn't get what you were saying there because it was kind of fast and there was a little distraction where I was, so I couldn't get what you said about the project management. The strategic management or the project management? Yes, yeah, strategic management, I mean. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, strategic management. Okay, I'm also seeing a question from the chat room. Uh, she said, this is Esther Ojo. She said, please, can you explain direct and indirect side? Okay. Portfolio and project management equals direct side by operations and strategic. Thank you so much, Mr. Ahmed. All right, so Mr. Ahmed has already done that. So what do we mean by strategic? Strategic comes out from the word strategy. And strategy simply means your ability to see the future and take decisions in the future as to bring the future to the present. So anytime, we hear things like someone is innovative. It simply means that the person is a strategic person. So he had been able to, through his thinking abilities, gone to where some ideas had been lying and bring them to the, to the reality, to us. So strategic involves everything around vision, goals and objectives, uh, mission statements, planning, uh decision making communication and so many others all right so strategic management uh involves number one traveling to the future to get something for us that are in the present that is visionary number two it involves planning that's working to get the vision that you have gotten the fruition then it involves decision making, taking decisions that will ensure that the idea or the project vision comes to life. And all of those things that has to do with communication, communicating with the right people that will help you drive the vision, the function. All of those things are boundary around strategic management. If you want to break it down, strategic management also drives us more to finding out the intent while we are coming up with the project. What's the intent? What's the strategic objective? That's talking about sustainability, advantage of the project. Okay, for how long will the project run? All of those things are strategic decisions that need to be taken. Who and who will benefit from the project? And how will they continue to benefit in the project? All of those things are where strategic management comes to play. All right, Mr. Henry, does that make, did I explain anything at all? Please, if I did, kindly type yes in the chat room so that we can all flow together. All right, now that there is no further questions for me now, uh, let me quickly run through the slides. Okay, so what is a project? A project is a unique endeavor to produce a set of deliverables within clearly specified budget, time scale, and specification. The specification here talks of the quality and the scope inclusive. All right. So we call that the triple constraint. It is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product or service. Okay, so I may have to flip through some of the things uh, as I've already defined them. And for an enterprise or directed activity deliverable, a tangible, verifiable work product. It is a quantifiable outcome of the project which results in a partial or full achievement of the project objectives. 
Example, feasibility studies, terms of reference or charter, a detailed design or a working product, all of this could be deliverables in a project. Now, considering the characteristics of a project, projects are temporary, they are unique, they are progressive and they are elaborate. They have approved budgets, they have limited resources, they have element of risk and they have defined time scale. That means if you're carrying out a project, you must put all these things in consideration before executing those projects. Also, one of the um, attributes of projects is that projects are set to achieve beneficial changes. All right, I, I've already explained most of this before, so I may not have to explain them again. Now, projects versus operations. Remember I said operations are just uh, like support to projects. All right, so operations are the day to the activities carried out to ensure that the objectives of the project deliverables are achieved. The objectives of the project deliverables are achieved. So in a case, uh, pro uh, operations are the business side of the project deliverable. So for instance, you produce water, the production of water will be regarded as a project. The sales, customer relations, human resource, and every other thing you do to make sure that the project, uh, the, the water is sold and the revenue comes to the organization, that's now operations, all right? So projects are temporary and unique while operations are ongoing and repetitive. The, pro the objective of a project is to attend the project objective and close the project. Why the objective of an operation is to sustain the business. Please, let's get this uh, difference is very clear. Project ceases when the declared objectives have been attained, while operations adopt a new set of objectives and continue to work or function. Similarities between uh, project and operation. We can see that both are performed by persons, both are constrained by limited resources, both are planned, executed, and controlled, and both have elements of risks. Now, quick examples on of projects. While well, releasing a music album, new music album, testing and installing a piece of equipment, developing a new training program, establishing a new youth center, an event like the Olympic Games, like your birthday, your wedding, whatsoever. Then manufacturing a new product, installing a new computer system. All of these can be considered as projects, examples of projects. Research and development programs, construction projects, so many other ones. Okay, so what is project management? We've defined project management as the application of skills, tools, and techniques and management processes required to successfully undertake a project, right? Now, projects are accomplished using the project process groups, and we have five process groups in project management. Please, I will need you to write this down. The five process groups in project management. Please, I will need you to write it down. Five process groups in project management. Please, I will need you to write it down five process groups in project management. We'll have the initiation process group, we'll have the planning process group, we'll have the execution process group, we'll have the monitoring and control process group, and we'll have the closing process group. I'll repeat that again, although it's on the screen. We'll have the initiation process group, just as the name is, initiate, conceptualize, come up with something, start something, ideate on something that's initiation. Then after um, initiation has been done, the next thing we do is to plan on the project. That means in the initiation phase would have screened all the ideas that come away and then come up with the one that is the most appropriate for project to be executed. Then we can go ahead and plan it. So the second uh, process group is regarded as planning process group. And just as the name is, all we do there is planning. And like we know, a project is said to be complete after the planning. And that's, that makes planning a strategic aspect of project management. Because in planning, you see the end of the project as you put the activities on paper, all right? So if the project is going to be a three-story building, the planning tells you it's going to be a three-story building and tells you exactly how it's going to look like at the end. So we see the vision of the project or the, the, the end product of the project even before the project as per execution begins. So that is a strategic approach 
to project planning. And I will come back to this a little, uh, but let me conclude. Well, then from planning, we'll go to executing, ensuring that we carry out all the project, uh, all the project activities as described in the project plan. All right, then we'll have the monitoring and control, ensuring that the activities are carried out according to plan or where there are changes, we'll make sure that we'll take the right decisions to effect those changes uh, and to ensure that the project uh, objectives are still online without massive deviations. All right. Then finally, we have closing. We only close if the project objectives have been met, or if there is no need for the project objectives again, or if the stakeholders agree that they don't need the project again, then we can close out the project. But if all conditions remain the same, project can only be closed when the objectives have been met. But if there are factors that come in, like external influences and all of that, so stakeholders can come up and say they don't need the project again. And then there could be situations if the project uh, date has expired, there may be no need. The objective has expired, there may be no need for the project again. All right? Okay. Now I said I will come back to planning a little. Remember, I said our lives need to take a projectized approach. This is not a motivation speech, and it can never be. But if you call it so, thank you. Now, Every one of us, every one of us, we are currently occupying the positions that we ever imagine, either consciously or unconsciously. Whether we plan or we do not plan, we should know that planning can be done consciously or unconsciously. Now, there is a saying that uh, lack of planning is planning to fail. So you have two plans. You have a conscious planning, which is planning to succeed, or unconscious planning which is planning to fail one of the simple ways to change your life situation or change any situation in life is to change your plan and before you could change your plan you have to change your mindset very very important if you can do this every other thing about this whole project process group series becomes so easy for you to do so that's all i'm going to say about that now proceed all right so we're also said project management comprises of skills, tools and techniques and processes. So the skills are a set of specialist knowledge and experience required to reduce a project risk and increase its success. Tools here uh, means items used to improve the chance of a project succeeding, used as a means of achieving a the result. Then the processes here involve series of actions bringing about a result, it includes various management processes and techniques. Now, in summary, project management is the application of skills, tools and techniques, and management processes. And this is where we're going to call it a time in this first lecture. And if there's going to be a question for me, I will take it right now. And then we'll go take our break.